Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about 7-1 solving systems of equations. Because this is based on pre-cal, we're going to go pretty quickly through this because you studied it extensively in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. And so we're going to do an example of each of the types and a couple of application problems. So, first of all, solving systems of equations is um, finding a point or points. where equations are satisfied. An easy way that I like to think about this, this helps me because I'm a visual person, uh, is to think about it like this, where graphs intersect. So where graphs intersect, let's say you've got two lines. The solution set where both of them are satisfied is where they're going to cross. If we're solving by substitution or elimination, using matrices, which is what we're going to do in the next couple of sections, it really all comes back to where are these equations satisfied. So your solution is going to be a point or points. So it's going to look like this. You're going to have an xy pair if there's a solution. So let's solve by substitution. With substitution, you're going to solve for one of the variables and then plug it into the other one. So I'm going to take this one, 2x minus y equals 10, and I'm going to add y, 2x, 10 plus y, divide by 2, so x equals 5 plus y over 2. So when I do this, I'll sub it into the other equation. So x goes in here, plus 2y equals 1. So 15 plus 3y over 2 plus 2y equals 1. So when I do this, uh, I'll subtract, so let me just, let me just rewrite, let's bring it all the way up here, 15 plus, uh, 3y over 2 plus 2y, uh, this would be 7y over 2, right, so 1.5 plus 2 would be 3.5 equals 1, subtract 15, 7y over 2 is equal to negative 16, 14, <laughs> Negative 14. I'll multiply by 2. So 7y is equal to negative 28. Divide by 7. Divide by 7. Y is equal to negative 4. Okay? Like I said, we've got a solution set, so I've got to plug negative 4 into one of these equations. So I'll take this negative 4, and I'm going to plug it in for y. 2x minus negative 4 equals 10. So 2x plus 4 equals 10. So 2x is equal to 6 because I subtracted over 2 over 2. x is equal to 3. My answer is 3 comma negative 4. That is my answer. One solution on this. All right. What can we do with this? So we can find the dimensions of a rectangular garden that has a perimeter of 100 feet and an area of 300 feet squared. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a little pick for you. Let's imagine that our length is x and our width is y. So perimeter is equal to 2x plus 2y. And our perimeter is equal to 100. So 100 equals 2x plus 2y. Our area, which is inside, this is 300. Right? So um, 300 is equal to, how do I find area of a rectangle? It's length times width, so it's x times y. All right, so I need to solve this. I'm going to use substitution. So what I can do is I can say that uh, x is equal to, there's a bunch of different ways I could do it. I'm actually going to divide all this by 2. So x plus y is equal to 50. So x is equal to 50 minus y. 
And I'll plug that in over here. So I've got 300 is equal to 50 minus y times y minus y. Not times, oh no, it is times y. So I'm going to, I'm just going to do a little swap here. So 50y minus y squared is equal to 300. And when I look at this, I have negative y squared plus 50y minus 300 is equal to 0. What are the ways I could solve this? Well, you've got a couple of options. Options are, I can uh, graph it. I can use quadratic formula. I could try to factor it. Okay, so any of the things that we've done in the past to use this uh, to solve for a quadratic now is going to give me what I want. And so what I can do is what I can do is graph this. And I'm using an app, an online app. So it's called Desmos. So what I did was I set up an equation. X equals negative uh, y squared plus 50y minus 300. And, and I want to know where it's equal to zero. Correct. So this, I'm trying to figure out where it equals zero. It's quadratic. And in this case, Desmos is a good option because I've got this y equals. It would work the same way if you had it for um, x or y. So I've got an I've got an x equals and a y squared. So I know it's going to be a sideways parabola. But if I had solved it the other way, I would have gotten the same answer in this case, uh, except the variables would have been flipped. So I would have had an, uh, a parabola that opens downward. However, anyway, my possible values are y equals 6.972 and 43.028. And when I plug those back in, what I get is the case where they could be flip-flopped. So check it out when I'm 2x plus 2y is equal to 100. So when I would plug that in, because the both of them are the same, the answers are both going to be the same. So when y is 6.972, x is equal to uh, 43.028. And when y is 43.028, that means x is equal to 6.972. So what are my solution sets? Solution sets are x is equal to, no, point... I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm not going to rewrite it um, as an equal sign. I'm going to rewrite it just as our point here. So 43.028 comma 6.972 and 6.972 comma 43.028. Okay, so those are my two solutions of this possible graph, okay? Which means those are the dimensions of my rectangle. Solve the system any way possible is what they're giving us here. So what I'm going to say is, all right, solving a system means where are they equal. And so this is why, this is why, the transitive property of equality, which maybe you remember from geometry or um, from a previous math class, means that if two things are equal to the same thing, they're equal to one another. So if both of these are equal to y, then that means they're equal to one another. This now becomes not a quadratic, but a cubic. And what I can do is I can combine like terms. This is minus 6x, so I'd be minus 3x, minus 3x. So I've got minus 9x is equal to 0. And this is something I have a lot of strategies I can use. Um, I could use graphing method, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to show you how to factor it. Uh, but you could use graphing, you could factor, you can use the rules for um, factoring that you just know, or you can factor out common terms. So I'm going to factor out an x and have x squared minus 9 equals 0. And then I see that this is a difference of squares, so I'm going to have x minus 3 and x plus 3 equals 0. So my solutions are x is equal to uh, 0 for this first one or negative 3 or 3. And what happens if I have those is y would be equal to, so if I plug in 0, so um, y is equal to 3x. So that would be um, either 3 times 0, which is 0, 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9, or 3 times 3, which is 9. So my solution sets are these, 0 comma 0, and uh, negative 3 comma negative 9, 
and three comma nine. Those are my three solutions. So in this case, there's three solutions there. And that's, uh, that's something I have to take into consideration. All right, using elimination. With elimination, we want to try to multiply something to make the lines equal. So I'm going to rewrite this 2x plus 3y equals 5, and I'm going to put it directly underneath the other one. So 3x uh, plus 5y is equal to 21. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this row by 3. I'm going to multiply this row by 2, uh, and that's going to give me 6x plus 9y equals 15. And then this one would be negative 6x plus 10y equals 42. And then when I add these lines, I get 0x uh, plus 19y equals, and this would be 59, 57. So it would be 57. And so if I divide by 19, I get y is equal to 3. I can plug that back in. So now I've got 2x plus 3 times 3 equals 5. And so this is 2x plus 9 equals 5. 2x is equal to a minus 4. So x is equal to negative 2. Put these two pieces of information together, I get negative 2 comma 3 for my answer. Okay, that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, Let's do a couple more examples. I want to show you a couple of things that could happen here possibly. So let's say I did this. Uh, I want to multiply this by negative 2. Um, and then this one's going to stay the same. So I've got negative 2x plus uh, 6y is equal to 4. And then I've got 2x minus 6y is equal to 4. When I add these, I get 0 equals 8. This doesn't make any sense. So nonsense solutions... Uh, means no solution. Okay, so that would mean no solution. So this would be, let's see, uh, I'm going to have x minus 3y, uh, x minus 3y equals negative 2. And then I'll have uh, 2x minus 6y equals 4. So check this out. If I go to home, check this out. They're, they're parallel. Okay, so when they're parallel, they're, they're never going to intersect, so there's no solution. So that's why you get a nonsensical solution, because it doesn't make sense to figure out where they're equal, because they're not. They're not equal. All right, so that's one of the things that could happen. Another thing that could happen is this. We've got uh, 4x minus 5y, so I see this negative 12 here, so I'm going to multiply this line by negative 3, and we're going to say this is negative 12x plus 15y is equal to negative 6. And negative 12x plus 15y equals negative 6. And so when I subtract this line, right, because they're now they're matching, so I could have multiplied that by 3. But anyway, so I subtract it. All of them are the same, so I get 0 equals 0. Uh, this means infinite solutions. Here's how it works. Let's say I've got um, my two equations here. I have 4x minus 5y equals 2. And then I've got uh, negative 12x plus 15y plus 15y equals negative 6. Check this out. They're actually the same line. So these lines are not parallel. They are the same. That's why they have infinite many solutions, because they're literally on top of one another. So if you get the 0 equals 0, that means infinite solutions. Supply, demand, and equilibrium. Uh, this is um, an economics concept. And essentially what happens is, if I have a supply curve that looks like this, right? So supply, uh, and then I have um, another curve here that's my demand, right? Let's, let's imagine that this comes down. When, so supply is how many iPhones they make or whatever. Hopefully that's not trademark. So how many iPhones they make. Um, the demand is how many people want. And so in business, what you want to do is you want to try to make sure that you don't want to make too many, but you don't, you don't want to make too few either. 
you want to make the right amount where you can make money. Okay, so there's a lot of different curves. This is the, the most basic of the concepts is how do I break even? Equilibrium is breaking even. Um, that would mean I made enough, I sold enough. Right there is where I'm at $0. I didn't lose anything, but I didn't make anything. Uh, to break even is where they're equal. So where supply equals demand. Okay, so demand, supply and demand, that's where they're, where they're equal. So that's the intersection. And so if I look at this, essentially what I'm saying is where is 160 minus 5x equal to 35 plus 20x? So I'm going to solve this like normal, plus 5x, plus 5x. This will be uh, 160 equals 35 plus 25x. Uh, subtract 35. So I've got 125 is equal to 25x. So x is equal to 5. So if x is equal to 5, then y is equal to, it would be 35 plus 100, because that would be 5 times, uh, 20 times 5. So y is equal to 135, and that is um, where supply equals demand. Okay, so that's how those that's how those work. Set, find out where they're equal. All right, guys, that's it. That's all for uh, section 7.1. It's an overview of a lot of things you've covered probably before. Uh, so let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.